Okay. Yeah, so um, so biblical preaching, just wanted to ask, uh, you know, uh, ever since we've started the course, I'm sure some of you have been like preaching regularly. Uh, like I'm sure John Paul, uh, I'm not sure of the others. Um, maybe you've been sharing, um, preaching. So just wanted to know, um, like, have you been able to put to practice some of these things? And also, if so, what has been your experience? Just wanted to hear from you. Um, some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, have you been able to put to practice? Uh, consider some of these things. Even if it's one thing, maybe um, just like to hear, you know, what is that one thing that you're able to use and so on. So, um, yeah. Um, I'll just add one, one or two things first. Sure, sure John. Um, communication, uh, so I've been trying to work on uh, making it better. Um, okay. So uh, specifically uh, making it relevant for people uh, of, uh, depending on their culture as well, uh, right. yeah, from their background. So um, so that, that's been helpful and I'm getting feedback from people also regarding that. Um, so com communication and also the um, uh, rate of speech, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, so that that's been also helpful um, in in working out. Uh, okay. And preparation part uh, is mainly is the focus now, uh, which which is uh, really helping out. Well. Okay. Okay. Hey, good to hear that. Yeah. So yeah, I've been doing the same. You know, with uh, uh, because uh, you know, since I'm sharing almost every other Sunday, so um, yeah, I've been doing the same as well. Um, uh, we have two things: is uh, one is of course um, making it relevant for people. Like we've been doing the series on faith and science, so um, knowing the audience has really helped uh, in that sense to know what's you know uh, what is the mix. You know, you have some students, you have some senior folks, you have some homemakers. Uh, you have uh, people who are retired, so you know it's a mix of all that, right? In a church congregation, so um, to be able to, uh, since you know the audience that I'm referring to uh, are pretty much uh, it's it's a small smaller number, um, in the sense it's about maybe 85, 200, right? So, uh, or maybe not even 100, you know, 85, 90. That's it. So, um, so it's it's uh, it's helped in that sense, you know, to to keep the attention um right because we're, we're dealing with some like some heavy material you know we're talking about faith and science so um to keep it relevant to keep it uh, simple um and also to engage right through our right through so that has helped yeah so knowing the audience one the uh, second thing of course again rate of speech you know this last sunday um like we uh it was a uh, yeah, what happened was we had a few things, you know, like bands, wedding bands to be read out. Then there was some other instructions and so on. So, uh, so really had to make sure that the message was uh, clear, simple, and also, you know, crisp, right? So, because we didn't have too much time, and um, so about yeah, about twenty five, thirty minutes, I think. So, um, the, the, what John was sharing about rate of speech that really helped um, to be able to um, to be mindful of that, right? Um, yeah. Anyone else uh, who's been sharing? Maybe um, have you been able to put to practice um, whatever we've been learning? Um, Jeffina, I know you do videos. So anything from your side? Have you been uploading videos? Uh, I have thought about like uh, to do all this uh, topical studies hereafter, 
and prepare videos maybe according to what we that, like the scripture studies and topical mm. studies i can do something like that but all my videos that i'm posting now are actually pre recorded of course so, it okay okay yeah it's all pre recorded so maybe okay. as i start recording for december or january i thought of putting into practice okay okay yeah yes, okay thank you thanks dear um anyone else georgia abubakar rosalyn um others paul success aradhana lubega um well if um, you know you you could think of it you know it, it need not be a very formal kind of a presentation it could be a small uh, informal uh, thing that you're doing uh, sharing that you're doing so you could think of these things um and hopefully it will help you you know like um, uh, to start preparing um, you know a topical thing or a character study or uh, um, you know a textual sermon you know uh, at least in our minds you know we can approach it in, in in that way saying okay um let me do this and i can think of all this you know the introduction the uh, the outline um so involving uh, including all this so that it flows together so you can you know uh, communicate it well to the audience um yeah so the illustration whatever we we discussed you know think of all that think of incorporating that um and and of course share your feedback you know what um, what helped what did not help and so on right okay okay so today um uh let's continue with what we um, what we looked at last class so we've been looking at um, some of the uh, practical things right practical guidelines uh, and also um what will really help us to present or help us to speak in confident manner and we started by looking at preparation practice perseverance uh the structure making it simple uh and also the fact that you know speaking in public speaking can be a very pleasurable thing so you know moving from being petrified you know fearful to move into that place of confidence um yeah so all that and also personality wise you know you don't have to try to be someone else or you don't have to withhold being who you are um uh, you know let everything um which is in you you know just you why don't you communicate that you know feel free uh, to be you in the way you speak and so on right um so we looked at that okay so let's um, let's look at let's follow um, i mean let's continue um there are a few more points in that uh, while we are looking at you know what what will really help us to speak confidently okay uh, one of the things that would really help us i'm at point number 7 is to visualize um uh, see yourself uh, right there you know you you especially if you know that okay this is the this is the place uh, where i'm going to be speaking um to you see yourself speaking to you see yourself uh, being in that place ministering to you know uh, how many ever people are going to be there uh, in your mind you know, you're speaking confidently uh, in other words we are visualizing right um it's a sanctified imagination so uh, nothing unrighteous about it uh, and and to to visualize that saying okay i'm here i'm doing this this is how i'm starting and and to see it in our minds i uh, so that will really help us right so so one of the things uh, like i shared one of the things that really threw me off was the fact that the whole view was different when i went forward you know in school for the first time public speaking and uh, it was very very different all eyes looking at me i didn't expect that so so to visualize this would really take care of that aspect you know there are no surprise elements that way you know that okay this is how it is going to be so you visualize that okay this is how it's going to be i'm there i'm speaking uh, i can i'm going to hear my own voice for some time now and uh, these are the responses of the people and i'm going to be speaking on this right so um uh, and uh, that should hopefully help you to carry yourself confidently and uh, and go and uh, start in a confident manner right so the uh, you know what we need to understand is uh, you know it's it's okay to feel some amount of uh, nervousness right? it's okay it's just our 
you know physically our body just getting ready you know maybe maybe you're sweating a bit or you know you're you're feeling a little bit nervous it's it's fine that is okay right uh, you're not overtly nervous but you're just in anticipation right which is which is okay which is fine um so expect that is expected so let that not throw you off you know you think okay i will be feeling this way emotionally i'll be feeling this way i'll be feeling a little bit on the edge that's fine and this is how it is um so you tell yourself that it's, it's going to be fine and when we walk up you know do so decisively right when you when you're going there maybe maybe it's a formal thing and then people are you know there's a speaker there and uh, whoever's there to introduce you and they is inviting you up and say so and so is here and or or maybe it's you know it's your time to go up and uh, speak do so confidently right do so decisively even when you walk up uh, don't hesitate you know uh, you know you don't have to run to the you know the mic uh, but uh, just you know be poised be confident and and go go there and, and enjoy it right uh, you have you've been given the opportunity to to be god's spokesperson enjoy it enjoy the process i right? don't just suffer it enjoy the process right go there and when you start do so in a confident manner right uh, maybe your voice uh, let it be comfortably loud right you don't have to shout and scream and say hey good morning everyone uh, but you know let it be comfortably loud right and confidently loud uh so that when you hear your voice being uh, loud and you you hear the confidence in your own voice it in turn you know gives you that confidence right um so all that nervousness just disappears when you hear your own voice and when you hear the confidence in your voice uh it does something to you again right so um it it is okay like i said it's okay to feel a little bit nervous and uh, and don't worry you know people don't know what's going on on the inside of you you know maybe you're thinking oh that person also can sense my nervousness no you know people don't know it's all on the inside so don't worry um don't fidget don't you know don't uh, uh, uh just go with confidence and enjoy right okay uh, the next thing that we see is that to ask ourselves this question you know even as you're preparing am i passionate about this this thing this message uh that i'm going to be sharing okay um if you're not passionate about it then it's better that you don't do it right or if you're not passionate about that particular topic that message um it, you need to ask the lord lord i want to be passionate about it just give me a revelation to me it to it seems to be just information but lord you give me that inside information which is revelation right give me that inside information about what i uh, what i need to share um therefore you know i can be passionate about it it's a difference a big difference when you're passionate about a subject and when you're speaking and when you're when you're dispassionate you know you're not interested about the subject okay so it must be when you're passionate it means that it's something that i'm really interested in right i'm really interest, interested in uh, interested in that and 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 i'm i'm so much of enthusiasm for it right and um and it and, and people know you know sometimes you're just speaking about something and then um, i'm sure in your casual conversations you know some and you're talking about something and then this person is just so interested about it and till then they were totally disinterested you know they were talking they were just yeah listening and then you you come to that subject which is their favorite or maybe you know it's their hobby or maybe they'd say a sport or whatever and then suddenly they come alive and right? you notice that so when there's a lot of enthusiasm when you're passionate about something when you're really interested in it so ask the lord lord uh just give me that inside information and about this this topic about the subject uh, in other words to ask the lord lord give me that you know if you want to use a biblical term give me that burden god you know give me that burden from that burden comes the passion that give me that heart 
right so um sometimes it's like oh god you know what is this and you know uh, i just need to share and i don't want to you know want it to be like uh, yet another message i don't want it to be okay uh, just be done with it i want you know people to experience encounter the truth i want people to experience the freedom that truth brings the liberation that truth brings so god give me that revelation give me that passion right so when you when you are excited when you are interested then you will communicate that to the congregation to the audience um you will communicate that you will share that and it will it will be you know uh, the words that you're speaking the message um and along with that this and this passion for what you're speaking this burden with which you're speaking also becomes part of the message right and and there's so much of conviction even as you speak there's so much of conviction there's so much of so much of authenticity um uh, when we say authenticity i'm saying talking about realness right to it um so people see that okay it's real it's not something superficial it's not something artificial it's not something that's made up but it's real right and um and you're able to share that so passion is very very important to be really interested in it so that brings about the conviction okay um okay so we're not overruling yeah the work of the holy spirit right but we're saying god we work in me so that as a messenger you know i am all that the message um is supposed to be you know i i i the let the message go through me in me and transform me change me and uh, so that when i communicate it i'm not just doing it as a job i'm not doing it in a very disinterested manner but i'm doing it with that passion with that burden with that fire right okay then the next one is um, you know as we continue to minister as we continue to uh, share to look back and to really thank god to reflect uh, to see you know the distance that we have traveled to learn from those mistakes to learn from so from the from the good you know to from those um from the good things that we have done right? from the progress that we have made to learn from that okay what has worked um what has not worked and and to learn from that to avoid those mistakes again right to making avoid making those mistakes again and to go forward in the things that we have progressed in so far and right? to keep keep doing that okay then the 10th one is um to to perfect what we are doing you know to do those fine tunings to what we are already um uh, doing to to speak and to become even more confident and uh, to be sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit and um to perfect those skills right to think about it uh because uh, not just think about preparing not just think about um you know ministering but also look back and see okay what could i have done better uh and what am i doing better or what are those mistakes that i'm repeating over and over again you know can i avoid it so what should i do to avoid it and why do i make those mistakes yeah uh, why do i make those mistakes what should i do to avoid it right so sometimes maybe um well we keep forgetting certain things right maybe we uh, camp around the certain points for a long time and we don't we end up rushing towards the end like mentioning those things that are you know that are important um that are life giving but we end up rushing through because we have probably 10 minutes le left or 15 minutes left and you realize that hey, there's so much content yet to be shared but you've you know you stayed on certain points which were your favorite or you know uh, something like that happened and uh, well it's if it's happening over and over again then that's that's an area of concern right that's an area that needs to be changed uh, so uh, perfect that fine tune that okay so how how can i do that how can i communicate this as a person you know how can i how can i communicate it clearly how can i communicate in a simple manner how can i communicate in a confident manner um you know learn all that you know, learn to do that okay right um so now let's look at um, you know i'm on page 41 in my notes i'm not sure um if that is the same so some of the keys to effective preaching 
okay some of the keys now there, there could be an overlap we looked at confident speaking and uh, now this those were some of the practical aspects of it now this would also involve some of the spiritual aspects of it right keys to effective speaking um so uh, we're looking at uh, the first and foremost thing which is prayer okay now prayer is very important uh, because uh, i mean it's it's a lifeline of every believer it's uh, it is something as necessary and something as simple as breathing you know we know that because we are engaging with god who is the source of revelation and wisdom who is the source of uh, you know the power who 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 actually enables us uh, and he he's the one who puts us into into ministry and he also enables us to minister right so, so praying really shapes us praying really transforms us changes us and there's a great transaction that happens where we are able to put down our burdens we are able to put down our fears and um, you know after that season or time of prayer you are so um, empowered you are so strengthened and um, you know all that bad mood is gone all those fears have gone and now you really you know raring to go you really want to speak okay and the holy spirit has um, has uh, you know has kind of imparted so much hope and so much uh, um, so much grace and and all that in you and you just feel it in your emotions even right there's so much a sense of peace and a sense of joy and for no reason right? there's a sense of joy and it's not like the physical environment has changed or whatever but uh, but the but god has put that joy in you and it's so infectious contagious that you, you know you begin to speak and that that's there's an impartation of that as well right so uh, which is a sign of uh, the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit right this sense of peace this sense of quietness and confidence that god brings and so we pray to receive from him we pray to um, and be empowered changed ourselves we we pray to be you know uh, refined ourselves um and to renew to be renewed ourselves okay so so main things if you want to see you know we pray because um, god gives us illumination that he will give us insight you know it could be a message that we have shared many times but god gives us that edge god gives us that sharp edge um to that message and when you preach it you know it could be a truth that you you you've spoken many times but you know it comes out in a different way it comes out with the edge with that sharp end you know uh, that only the holy spirit can give right and you know that something is different you know and you know you and you sense it even as you're ministering that something is different because it has come with the edge okay so uh, paul asked the question what is the difference between teaching and preaching the word of god well uh, like we studied um, preaching uh, let me look at preaching first preaching is proclaiming right Preaching is proclaiming, declaring, and uh, and so we may not go into the details. We may we may not go into the details. It is just a proclamation of truth. It's a declaration of it. Okay, so, so I, I might declare, oh, you need to be born again in order to be saved. I might declare, okay, this is what you need to do, but I might not go into much detail of it. Okay, whereas teaching would be. Going into the details of uh, you know what is the need for salvation, uh, why uh, uh, do we need to be born again? What is the you know what, what the fall of man, and uh, what resulted as a fall of man? You know so much of details. So you're going into the details of it, the nuts and bolts of it, the workings of it, and um, so with the intention of um, uh, with the intention of establishing people in the truth. Right. So, so people are taken from a place of uh, well, uh, not knowing or ignorance sometimes, or knowing to a lim limited capacity, to a place of you know being established in the truth, place of knowing and receiving the truth. So, um, so that would be a basic difference between teaching and preaching the word of God. So preaching is declaration, proclaim, proclaiming the truth. Teaching is taking time to explain uh, what the truth is, how it works, and so on. For example, you know, to, if you're going to do a teaching about the gifts of the spirit, now that's you know you're going into the gifts, why gifts, uh, you know what what are they for, and uh, what are the different kinds of gifts of the spirit, and 
what are the you know outworking of each of that uh, well if you want to preach the same message it would be well the gifts are for today and you will just declare that yes i need to pursue god i need to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and god wants to move in my um, move in our midst so i need to be passionate i need to receive you know something on those lines where we are not really going into the depth but uh, we are proclaiming declaring and each has its role and function right i hope that helps paul okay and uh, sometimes um, it also is like um, you know certain as certain parts of the message that you're sharing you might have to declare preach it and maybe there are certain sections that you you know teach go into details explain the workings of it that could also happen right um so paul uh, does that help or is there uh, something more that you want to ask um okay you you let us know put it on the chat right okay so uh, we see that um uh, when we pray god illuminates our understanding gives us revelation he gives us utterance right? it's okay it's uh, okay first i have understood yeah thank you thank you paul so illumination utterance and also um, you know when we pray god draws the people right um, draws the people to himself and um, also a lot more things can happen uh, when we pray god protects us the lord protects us um preempts right what could happen so it's like uh, alerting in advance so that we can pray um, and we can be prepared and uh, we can be you know protected right um from the enemy so when we pray uh when we pray for protection when we pray for when, when we pray you know for a particular let's say a ministry time of ministry um you know one of the things that can happen to us as uh, as ministers of god is that um you know suddenly these thoughts of accusation you know that you are not prepared enough or you're not worthy enough you're not holy enough um you know uh, or you're not skilled enough you're not experienced enough you know uh, all the sudden sudden you know uh, it's like an avalanche of thoughts you know just coming your way and then you realize that hey, this is an attack of the enemy you know when i normally when i do certain things you know these things i i don't think so much i don't overthink these kind of things it's it's really these kind of thoughts coming and uh, not helpful at all you know it's not like a constructive thing but it's just to keep me trapped so uh these kind of accusations right so we don't uh, we don't need to give in to that fear once we are aware then we then we rise up in faith right and we and we face that fear head on and we say that yes you know this is who i am this is who god has made me in christ and and uh, you know it's it's so wonderful that when we declare god's word and we declare uh, god's word personally you know about who we are who we have become and to acknowledge all the good things that we have in christ um scripture says that so that the sharing of your faith might become effective right so we acknowledge every good thing that we have in christ uh, through christ and what we have become what we are becoming and uh, and we see all those fears dissipate right we we see all those um, things all those questions all those accusations just kind of settling and you know uh, it's as if the path has been cleared and we can just walk now so so for those of us who are you know who are venturing out it can it can take us by surprise at times but to know that yes um these things do happen but i'm going to be ready for it you know sometimes you see you know in your audience um you see people who are more qualified than you maybe you see people who are more learned than you uh, more experienced than you and uh, yeah maybe they have been ministering for years you know all that happens uh you know and then you begin to question yourself 
oh, maybe they should be sharing, not me. But the fact that God has given you the message, God has given you the opportunity, and God has created this whole thing, is so that you can share what He has put in your heart. Right? So never doubt that. Never second guess that. Um, the fact that you know all this has happened is because you can share what He has put in your heart. Right. So go ahead. Just celebrate that. Give thanks to the Lord for that and share what he has uh, put in your heart, right? So don't give in to the accusation of the enemy, okay? Um, so another way Satan accuses us is also, you know, about the very message itself, okay? First of all, about you as a person, you as a messenger. Second, it could be about the message itself. You know, it's not deep enough or, you know, it's too deep that the people cannot understand. You know, all these things, right? Uh, it's it's amazing, you know, all, how all these thoughts suddenly come, you know, and um, uh, Satan can ac accuse us in that manner. Right? It, maybe it's too deep. Uh, people will not understand. People will not receive it. Maybe it's too simple. You know, you people will be disinterested and you know, all kinds of things, right? But the fact, you know, when you know that God has spoken and God has given that, just go with it. It, it can actually... Uh, it can seem very illogical at times, you know, God gives a message and then you're like, God, uh, this congregation al already, uh, I think, knows it. And and are you sure, God, you know, are you sure you want to talk about, uh, you know, your love? You know, it's something that everybody knows. John 3.16 is something that this congregation has grown up on. It's been a steady diet of that. So I sure, Lord, you know, why should we just go back to it again? But that's the need of the hour. God wants to reiterate that, right? Of course, you're, you're you, you know you've prepared, you've prepared, you've studied, and and still God seems to be, you know, emphasizing this. Go with it, right? Um, and also, uh, well, there could be accusation about the audience. You know, they are this, they are that. They don't love you. They don't respect you. They don't, you know, all kinds of things, right? So, uh, so just go with. What God has put in your heart, just go with, um, go in full confidence, right? Go with prayer, and prayer actually settles all that. Um, and once we begin to share, then you realize, okay, this is what I'm, this is why, you know, there's been so much attack. Satan doesn't want me to really um, convey or communicate this message. And so all these things have been happening, but I'm just pushing through, right? I'm going with it, I'm going on. Okay, right. Second thing is to, um, so we're looking at um, effective preaching, right? Some of the keys, um, some of the important things to remember. Second thing is to validate whatever you're sharing, you know, some of those statements, important points or important statements that you're making. Validate that with scripture. Okay, let it not be an assumption. Let it not be an opinion. Right? This is a this is a, a statement, a truth, a declarative truth that you're sharing. Something that people can take back, think about, put to practice. Right. So validate that from with scripture. So validate it with scripture, share scripture. This is what God's word says, right? And therefore, you know, you're making that statement. So when we validate scripture, then with scripture, then, then there is that added emphasis and that uh, approval that comes from scripture. Then there is that authority, authoritative authentication that comes because of scripture, okay? so. So it's people realize that it's not just our opinion or not just a great good idea, not just a you know a popular saying, but it's actually the word of God. Okay, it's just the word of God that has been uh, shared, right? So validate that. Uh, one other thing that uh, we uh, we we make you know the mistake that we make as speakers is uh, you know we, we want to read a particular verse but then we t tell the audience not to turn to that particular verse right we say okay you don't have to turn there but let me read it out uh, that's really unnecessary right uh, 
well let them turn you know let them turn in there you just read out the scripture probably you don't you know the reason why people say that is they don't want people to be distracted or you know they you want people's attention to be there um, you know you don't want them to be uh, distracted from whatever you want to say but that is fine right? anyway you're reading out the scripture so if you want people to turn you say please turn in your bibles but if you don't want people to turn and just don't say it okay, you read out the scripture yourself okay let me read it out and you just read it out and people will listen anyway right okay so um so another thing that we need to make sure is that um, that there is a revelation okay which is which is interpretation revelation explanation and also uh, you know the burden and the passion and the application okay what we can call as um, heat and light okay the light would be the the uh, explanation the revelation the interpretation um, and the heat would be the passion and the burden and uh, you know the application point so so it should not be just one or the other right there's both heat and there's both light so um so sometimes you know when we look at our message you know we can we can reflect and see okay was there enough heat Uh, was it just passion without uh, a revelation or without interpretation without explanation or teaching right was it just a feel good was it just a pumped up kind of thing you know saying hallelujah praise the lord and glory and all that and without you know the without the light right? so we can learn right i need to have both in equal measure right uh, because teachings which have uh, without passion teachings which are there without passion uh, can be boring to the audience you know can be people can become disinterested but on the other hand teachings without uh, um, you know without the uh, explanations um, can be you know it can be just like people might feel okay i'm being manipulated you know just lift your hand and say hallelujah you know say it again and uh, saying okay you know i am this is what it is without actually going into the revelation or the explanation or the depth of scripture if it's going to be just that then people feel you know there's an emotional high people feel manipulated and uh, yeah at the end of it there's not much edification right so we can identify and um uh, correct those things so so the thing is you know scripture plays an important part so have validate things with the word of god back up everything with the word of god okay okay so the next thing that we see uh, is one of the things uh, important thing aspects of it is to include humor okay to um, humor really helps you know just like how an how an illustration would help um, when we say humor, you know, we're saying making light of the situation, maybe uh, even being able to laugh at oneself, right? Um, um, it really helps. Okay, so uh, it helps in a way where, you know, suppose you want to, you know, you know um, uh, conveying something which is uh, very, very serious, very, very convincing, self convicting. Um, and uh, well people are uh, you know kind of taking time to deal with it right and a, and a humor helps in a gentle manner to relieve that whole tension maybe something very difficult right for them to hear but you've said it but then when there's humor you're not diluting but you're just helping people to relax right it helps um so you know but then the thing is uh, humor is always the uh, it's, it's one of the ingredients it's not the main course okay because otherwise people can just listen to uh, you know hear the jokes listen to the funny anecdotes and uh, they can laugh about it but not really taking anything of value back home 
Okay, so it's you know it's just a spice. So just like any dish, and you would you would use it sparingly just to heighten the taste of it. But that's not the main thing. That's not the main dish. The main thing is the main thing, which is you know the content of the Word of God. The message is the main thing, right? So um, so humor helps, but uh, don't substitute humor. Okay, um, with uh, substitute you know. Uh, the content of the message with humor okay um but also the fact is you know if you're refuting something um, don't uh, just use humor joke about it to refute you know to refute a particular thing you know it could be maybe some some uh some way of living some way of doing things you know maybe you're using humor to uh, to refute that, but also, um, you know, it shouldn't become like we're just mocking people who are living that way. You know, maybe uh, so. It it should be uh, with the truth that you're refuting that, that you're sharing the truth. Okay, this is what Scripture says, and that is why, you know, we we cannot accept that. You know, accept that way of living, accept that worldview. You know, um, but uh, when you're actually including humor in that, be careful that you're not mocking the other people you know so uh, even uh, you know recently when we're doing the faith and science uh, subject i i really i realized you know while some of the um uh, some uh, sorry faith and science uh, faith and science sermon series that we were doing um well i realized that there could be people who are uh, you know maybe scientists or maybe who are um, having that worldview right in the congregation like while well, certain were, certain things were really uh, totally logical, like right? uh, when you look at it, how certain non-Christian or non-scriptural worldviews of uh, you know not really in agreement with creation or a creator or everything you know it, it seems so illogical. But I, I I was just reminded not to mock that particular worldview you know not to share it in a condescending manner right while it was okay to you know include humor talking about the big bang talking about the origin of the species and so on but but not to really mock that because there could be people who are who are really seeking the truth who are sitting in, in the congregation right? and then and on top of that we are inviting people to come Right? We are inviting people to come and to listen uh, to these interesting uh, thoughts being shared. So, so don't uh, share in a condescending manner. Don't share in a you know in a in, in a way that you mock them. Uh, but if even if you are including humor, okay, right. And the thing is to use humor that is conducive to your personality. You know, who are you as a person? You know, are you a very uh, you know you speak in a very uh, in a manner that's quiet and that's thing so use humor in that manner or if you are very active and loud and extroverted and uh, you know just use, use a humor that is conducive to your personality right um so don't try it in another in other words don't try you know in an effort to be funny don't try to be someone else okay uh, don't try to put on um you know some and be someone else okay uh and the uh, fourth thing, okay, I, I think we'll stop with this, but um, let's look at this and then we'll stop, okay. Keep a plan on a good level of content per minute, okay. Now, um, no, we have, we, we will always have, uh, you know, in a, 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 you know, this content to be shared. And um, so we need to break it down and to see, okay, um, you know what is it how much of it can i share and how can i time myself and uh, so that i can keep moving at a good pace and i can share you know uh, what is it that i can share within this time frame right so uh, that would help you know when you have your outline that's why it helps you know when you're dealing with some difficult subjects when you're dealing with something which is deep uh, intense uh, sometimes complex so okay how much do i need to share how much time do i need to take to explain this okay now if it is very complex then obviously i need to spend more time so so plan it out okay 
uh, even as you're preparing a plan out okay I, I need to maybe spend some time on this okay don't leave it to chance you know don't leave it to okay i'll see how i feel and then i do it you know um just think about it okay maybe i will plan you know i will spend this much time on it because it requires uh that much of explanation right and and don't go into too much of depth into things that are really you know which, which don't need to be uh, you don't need to go there right you can, you can just stay and keep going right uh, because we cannot keep emphasizing you know each and everything some things are just to be stated and just move on uh, you don't really have to go into depths with it right not not at that point anyway so you you make that distinction okay these things i'm just going to just share and move on well these things um you know these so, uh, these verses uh, well i'm going to ask people to open the bible and and look at it and then read it well these verses i'm just going to just paraphrase them i'm just going to say okay you know that john 3 16 talks about how god loves the world you know you know about it and then you keep going on you know you're not going to dwell too much time just go into that you're not going to do that so that will help us to keep moving and not getting stuck with uh, one particular, uh, you know, one particular point, or uh, you know, which, um, uh, and then you you realize that you don't have time for the rest of it. Okay, okay. Uh, there's some more stuff. There's some more things that we need to look at when it comes to, you know, delivering content um, and planning out how much time for each of those contents. So some some more things that we need to look at. So we'll look at it in our next class. Okay. So uh, we'll stop here for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet in our next class. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you, Isaac. Bye bye.